Hi, everyone. My name is Emily, and I'm an art therapist and yoga therapist working and living in New York. And I'm really excited today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what we talked about in some of my earlier webinars about yoga, about relaxation, about how we can be more mindful throughout the day, and what are little like tips and tricks that we can do with our children at home with our families or even at work if we're you know working in a caregiving facility or as a teacher or social worker. So we're going to go through a couple of review things to begin with, talk about a little bit of yoga, relaxation, get into this idea of kind of yoga stories and how we can share and express more with our families at the end of the day maybe so we can all kind of be on the same page and have a have an enjoyable time together. Um, we'll talk about those and we'll also talk a little bit about some art and different ways that art can help you kind of working with your kids or working, you know, even with yourselves to make yourself feel a little bit more relaxed throughout the day. So you have handouts you can follow along with. We'll kind of go through those later on in the webinar. And if you have any questions, we'll have time at the end to go through some questions. So I'm going to get started now and share my screen with all of you. Okay, wonderful. So getting started here. So we'll start like we started um, most of my or all of the webinars that I've done with just a centering activity. And this is just a really great way to take a couple moments any time throughout the day to really check in with how you're feeling, check in physically how you're feeling, maybe emotionally or mentally, just kind of ground yourself down. And especially if we're learning new things to become a little bit more receptive. If we're a little bit more centered, we can also use this as a calming technique as well. So just finding a comfortable seat. And if you're sitting at home, if you're sitting on the floor, on a chair, the couch, just wherever feels best for you, find a seat. And if your kids are around you, ask them to maybe try to find a seat for a moment. And we'll just take a couple nice deep breaths here. The big inhale. And exhale. And a big inhale. And exhale. And on this one, just allow your shoulders to relax a little bit more. And start to notice the seat you're sitting on. Beginning to observe, is it hard? Is it soft? Are you able to allow yourself to relax a little bit more into the seat or the ground beneath you? Feel the floor, your chair holding you here so that you can ground down, that you can root yourself back into the earth so you can feel that support. Just take a couple more moments here and beginning to notice just if there's any part of your body that's feeling achy or really calling to you today. And just observing those areas. We'll get into some gentle movements later and hopefully that can relieve some of that pain or tension. But for now, just noticing how your body's feeling. Maybe even noticing the little details of the clothing you're wearing, the texture of it. Is it warm where you are? Is it cold? Just a few more moments here, a few more breaths. So we allow ourselves to really enter this space all together. And for this last few breaths here, take a nice big inhale, lift your shoulders up towards your ears and exhale, let your shoulders release. Inhale, lift your shoulders up towards your ears. And exhale, let them go. One more. Inhale, lift your shoulders. And exhale, let them go. Wonderful. If your eyes were closed or anything, you want to do a little bit of movement here, just coming back. And so these centering activities are really great, again, to do throughout the day. If you ever feel like you need to really touch back into how you're feeling. Also to work with calming yourself, calming your children, calming your family. So we'll move on. 
So what is yoga? And there's a lot of definitions, but for the purpose of today, we're just going to use yoga as the movements and breathing techniques and different types of relaxation, maybe even meditation or visualizations that allow you to connect with your body and your breath. Yoga is a safe and proven therapeutic tool used for children and adults of all ages and abilities. And really good to keep in mind as we move through today's webinar that if something doesn't feel right for you or you are working with a child at home or maybe you're thinking about a specific child that you work with at work, just kind of remembering what maybe their limitations might be, what could be modifications. We'll talk about a few of those later. But we always want to take care of our bodies. We want to take care of our own bodies, of course, but we also want to really help to facilitate care for the people we're working with, as well as our family members. So never pushing anything too far, really listening to how your body's feeling, noticing how it feels, and we don't want to go into any pain or anything, just some good stretching. So how can yoga be relaxing? It could be relaxing because it allows us to focus a little bit more on our bodies and our breath. With our busy, busy lives, it's really good to find different activities that allow us to find a little bit more mindfulness, find a little bit more relaxation, and even some self-care throughout your day. So when we are more mindful, we can practice these different techniques and really notice how, again, they're feeling in our body. So how it can be helpful. So through a different, through a combination of breath work, movement, and yoga, we can help to regulate our emotions. So we can start to kind of work with maybe not getting so angry in a situation and kind of being able to notice our emotions changing. It can really help to develop self-esteem and self-confidence. If you're learning to master a new skill like yoga or movement, it can be very beneficial, especially for children and differing abilities here as well. We wanna find things that we can master and that you know we can feel confident about. It builds really great self-awareness and body awareness because we're, we're noticing how our body moves through space, how our body relates to the ground or maybe different props or maybe even our friends and our family around us, how our body relates to those situations. And it helps, of course, build healthy lifestyles. So benefits of yoga, moving and stretching, relaxation, all of these things here really are able to benefit us, you know, in many, many ways, just a couple we'll go over here. It increases flexibility and strength. It can increase mood and tolerance, and it can allow us to, you know, deal with changing situations a little bit easier. It can increase our breath capacity doing different breathing exercises, which you have some in your handouts, um, and we'll go over a couple later on. It can increase sleep quality, you know, if we're a little bit more relaxed before we go to bed at night, we might have a little bit of a better sleep through the night. It can increase bone density, which is really good. You know, if you're doing different postures or standing or doing exercises, the pressure of our bones coming together here can be really beneficial. Can increase concentration, as we said, also build confidence. And we're, we're working to decrease anxiety and stress hopefully decrease injuries if we're a little bit more mobile and you know we're getting some stretching throughout the day. We'll hopefully have a little less injuries potential. It can decrease fatigue again, you know, if you're getting that better sleep quality, it can be really beneficial. It can decrease blood pressure once we allow ourselves to relax a little bit more, you know, we're not in that fight or flight, we can, you know, reduce some of that stress and also decrease burnout and reduce some burnout. So yoga for you and your kids and your family. So we can all benefit from taking time to be more present with our bodies and our minds. You know, we can take time throughout the day to really um, find different things that work for you. And we'll go over a few, like I said, but you know, you're really trying to find what works best for you. And maybe that means, you know, right before dinner, everyone reaches up towards the sky and takes a nice big stretch. And, you know, that's your yoga for the day and that's fine. Are you taking walks together? You know, it can look like a lot of different things. Um, and we want to remember, you know, self-care that we want to put ourselves first. We want to really take care of ourselves, especially as parents, as teachers, as caregivers, so that we can really continue to help our kiddos. 
And again, just we touched on this, I think, in the first webinar, but just talking a little bit about self-care and how important it is, especially as a busy parent or teacher or caretaker or social worker. You know, we really want to find time for self-care and knowing that it can look very, very different for everyone, what self-care looks like. It can be, you know, taking time to do some journaling, it can be having a sip of tea, can be listening to your favorite music when you're driving in the car, you know, finding different ways and finding ways that self-care can be um, kind of, you know, approachable for yourself. So finding something that works with your schedule is really, really important. And remembering that these different techniques of yoga, relaxation, mindfulness, and stretching are all different ways that we can practice self-care. So mindfulness, I'm throwing that word around a little bit today, and we talked about that in the other webinars as well. But mindfulness is a really important thing, and it allows us, again, to be fully present and paying attention to what we are doing and that really allows us to, you know, stay present with whatever's coming up so that we're kind of a little bit more aware, you know, where we'll notice things maybe quicker. It allows us to slow down a little bit more so that maybe our mind's not, you know, doing a hundred things at once so that we can become a little bit more aware of how we're feeling, what might be the best next move for ourselves, you know, and really putting stock and noticing those things is really, really important. It also will allow us to become a little bit more aware of our mental thoughts, our emotional fluctuations, and also physical sensations. Um, I'm hoping you all can think of some different ways at home that you can become a little bit more mindful. Maybe you're already doing some mindful techniques and maybe not even calling it mindfulness, but it can really be so many things. So I want you to you know, have fun with it and find ways that work best for you and your family. We talk a little bit about mindful art activities, um, and we'll also talk later about some art activities that you can do to kind of enhance your yoga stories and this kind of playful thing that you can do with your families. But mindful art, art activities are really, really wonderful. You have a couple in your handouts. Um, one I believe is a picture um, that gives you the colors to fill in already, which could be a really fun thing for your kids to do if they wanna do it during this webinar. That's great, have them do that. Uh, while you can listen along with me. Uh, and then the other one is a, you know, a free, a free drawing. You can choose kind of what you want to do, how you want to color it in. And some of the ben benefits, as you could imagine, of mindful art activities are it allows you to really focus on the task in front of you. It teaches us new ways of approaching a situation. So maybe you haven't done this type of art before, or maybe, you know, you're using a new material to do the art, you know, finding ways that allows you again to kind of build this um, sense of confidence, you know, by doing something and finishing a product by, by finishing a drawing and really remembering to show a lot of praise when our kiddos finish things because it can be sometimes a lot harder and, you know, also praise for ourselves if we finish something is really important. Um, again, it shows, yeah, personal growth and exploration because you're trying something new maybe, and you're also focusing on something. Um, and mindful art activities can be really, really helpful with children that sometimes have a really hard time focusing on things. You know, it might not be the first thing you want to do if someone has a lot of energy. Maybe your kiddo is running around the room and you want to kind of meet them where they're at and have a little fun with them first doing some movement. But then once you're trying to start to kind of calm things down, slow things down a little bit, a mindful art activity can be really, really helpful with this. And just to touch a little bit, um, just as I said, I'm an art therapist and art as therapy, you know, art can also can oftentimes be something that um, maybe a child or even an adult is not ready to verbally express yet, but through the art, they're able to, you know, kind of share a little bit more about this. Uh, art therapy sessions can do so many things, build confidence, you learn new skills, you find creative ways to process and express, and express emotions, can reduce stress, you know, problem solving, all these things that are really, really helpful. Uh, and, you know, just to rem remember that, you know, art therapy 
it can look really different for all of us. And I'm not saying it as um, a suggestion to take away from any, um, you know, mental health services that you're already receiving, but just can be a nice addition. And even trying at first just with some of these uh, art activities that I gave you in your handouts could be good. Talking a little bit about yoga for children with special needs and the use of yoga therapy um, for children of all ages and all abilities here. It can really help to develop motor skills. Like we said, you know, doing small movements can really help um, a child start to be more aware of their body and their body awareness, which also develops, you know, social awareness, self-awareness, self-confidence, all of these wonderful things that we're, you know, trying to work with our kids and show them a little bit more. Um, even adults, you know, we can, we can always develop better motor skills and things like that and encourage, you know, more emotional expressions. We can also encourage, you know, more body awareness, finding different ways to notice how our body's feeling in the moment, you know, is always something that is good and everyone should always be a part of that, you know, exploration. It's also really good to remember just that Children and some adults can be, you know, often highly sensitive to sounds, lights and noises and other stimulations. And that yoga can often create a calming environment for those children to be in. So thinking about that, even, you know, if you're working in a school setting or, you know, a private practice or a hospital or, you know, working at home with your kids, thinking about the environment as well, you know, are there a lot of distractions around you that, you know, if you're trying to, you know, have your child relax before dinner time. Is there, you know, the TV blaring on? Can you maybe lower the volume a little bit and have them kind of touch in with how they're feeling? And even for yourself, you know, if you're trying, if you're feeling a lot of stress and you're trying to calm yourself a little bit, notice the environment around you. Can you even dim the lights a little bit? Is there a nice noise you like or a sound, you know, putting that on and really, you know, taking the time to create a, you know, calming environment can really do. A ton of time and, you know, we want to stay with each other here. So finding a nice seat here and we're gonna just first start with the neck here. So you can look up towards the sky and Oh, I don't know what happened. I hope you all can see me again. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened there, but okay, we'll start again. So looking up towards the sky and then looking down towards the ground. So we're just stretching the neck a little bit here. Again, looking up towards the sky and down towards the ground. And coming up, we'll look over our shoulder and back to center and over to the other shoulder. And center one more time over. And back to center and all the way over. Good, coming back to center, we're just gonna warm up the hands here a little bit. So pressing your hands out towards me, open the fingers wide like you're saying stop and then close and then open them wide and then close. And again, open wide and close. Good, now fingertips go up and point them down. Fingertips go up and point them down. And again, fingertips go up and all the way down. Good, shake out your hands, shake out your fingers a little bit, shake out your neck. And then we're gonna work with our shoulders a little bit here. So lifting your shoulders up towards your ears, take a nice big breath. Exhale, let them go, ha. Ah. 
take a nice big breath, lift them up and exhale, let them go. And again, inhale, lift them up and exhale, let them go. One more time, lift them up and exhale, let them go. Okay, reach our arms all the way up towards the sky. Take a nice big inhale and exhale, bring them down. Ha, and you can ask your kids to show you their muscles and show your muscles to the screen. Reach your arms all the way up and bring them down. Ha. Again, like that, reach them up and bring them down. And then we're just gonna do a little rain coming down, moving the fingers. And this is something we'll talk a little bit later about during our yoga stories. And then sometimes there's some wind. So let your arms move, let your head and your neck, if you're standing up, let your whole body sway. Good. And then we're gonna reach our arms out to the side and bring them in, touch your shoulders and open and in and open and in and open and in good fingertips on your shoulders last few things here and touch your elbows reach them towards each other and open up wide and touch your shoulder uh elbows and open them wide good and again and open you can flap your little wings here a little bit just get a little movement side to side okay it's a really short yoga class, obviously, but just before we go back to our slides here, just taking a moment, um, a nice seat together and just talk a little bit about connecting our movement with our breath here. So we'll take a nice big inhale, reach your arms up towards the sky and exhale, let them go. Inhale, reach your arms up towards the sky and exhale let them go two more like that inhale reach your arms up all the way up and exhale let them go one more like that inhale reach up and exhale let them go very nice so that was just an example there of a really short kind of yoga class or yoga movement exercises that you can do at home throughout the day and really kind of finding something that feels good for you. So if you wake up in the morning and you know, your neck's really hurting, maybe doing some of those neck stretches. If you're like working with your kids and you're trying to get a lot of energy out, maybe doing some faster movements or, or some twisting or some running, things like that, you know, finding different stretches and movements that can be really great for you. And I hope you all were able to follow along with that. And we're going to go back to our um, screen sharing here so you can all see what I'm talking about. Okay. So just a little review there, you know, we did kind of this, this neck release, you know, moving our neck side to side, looking up and down. We were also able to do that um, finger wrist stretch, a really quick one there, and also doing some raindrops, which can be really, really fun. You know, if you're doing one of these yoga stories and a cat cow, we did that in a kind of a different way, if you know cat cow, but we were getting that same stretch in your upper back and through your chest when we had our fingertips on our shoulders and we were touching our elbows towards each other and opening up. So those are just some kind of basic ones that, you know, are really great to incorporate throughout your day, as well as incorporate, you know, maybe in your yoga stories, if you're doing kind of different animals, things like that. And we'll talk more about that a little later. So again, just talking a little bit about when we're doing this yoga movement, or stretching or relaxation for you and your family or at work and things like that. So when are we doing these, you know, sometimes they can be really great as a break between activities. If you've been, you know, doing schoolwork or, you know, folding the laundry for a long time, you might want to get up and take a stretch or move a little bit. It can be really great to do it before bed, a breathing or relaxation activity, something simple. Even like what we did at the end, you know, a breath movement linked with um, you know, our movement. So we're taking inhales and moving our arms, exhales, releasing our arms, things like that can be really great 
to provide a little bit more relaxation and centering right before bed. Uh, so I just did know that like these yoga movement stretching, they can be practiced at any time. We might not want to do them, of course, like right after we have a really, really big meal or dinner or something, you know, because it might hurt our tummy as well as, you know, it might not be the best idea to do it right when you wake up something super vigorous. Take a little time, let yourself awaken and start to move gently until you feel like you can get a little bit more activity or stretching in. And, you know, how can you do these things? And, uh, you know, it, it, it can be a choice of yours. You can find follow along with handouts. You can find a book or a video. You can ask a friend if they know of any yoga or movement stretches that they really like, maybe even people in your family, you know, your parents and things like that might have some ideas for you. And, or you can make it up and start to find what feels best for you and really listening to your bodies or ask your kids what they want to do, how they want to move, you know, or ask them how it feels to move, move like a lion or move like an elephant or move like a cat and kind of let that be your stretching and your movement. It's really good to remember that yoga can look like a lot of different things. Uh, for you and your family, for you at work, for you on your own. It can be these simple breathing exercises. It can be noticing how your body's feeling. It can be allowing yourself to go for a walk and being a little bit more mindful of what's going on around you, the sounds, the smells, the temperature. Yoga can be everyone sitting up a little straighter at the dinner table. It could be tossing a ball around. It could be having a dance party with your kids. Finding things that in the most, you know, the simplest way are self-care and ways that you can find movement, notice your breath a little bit more, be a little bit more aware of how you're feeling in this moment. And those are really great, you know, ways that you can be more mindful be more aware. And I hope that you have some uh, ideas of these different activities that you can do. And maybe we could talk about those when we get to our, you know, time for question and answers at the end, or if you want to leave any of that activity ideas or questions in the chat box, you're more than welcome to do that. We'll talk a little bit about we touched on this a little bit, just, you know, the power of your inhale and your exhale and how when we're holding a lot of tension, when life is really intense, how sometimes just taking a really big exhale can make the world a difference. And it's really important to notice that and notice when your body might be needing that, maybe when you're holding a lot of tension or stress or you're very worried about something and seeing if you can take a moment to let yourself exhale, let, you know, not just, not just, you know, that, that inhale and exhale, but really feel that exhale through your whole body and noticing if you can relax a little bit more, if you can become a little bit more aware of how you're breathing. The quality of our breath is so important, especially with our kids when they get really nervous or when they get really tense finding ways to allow them to breathe a little deeper, let them calm down a little bit, let them release and relax a little bit more. And you have some breathing techniques that we've talked about in the past webinars, as well as in your handouts. Uh, I think it was a square breathing one, which is a really great one. And we're gonna do two here together. So first, we're just going to read it and then we can do it together. So a, this is a really easy, simple breathing technique. It's a really fun and playful one to kind of do with your kids. So we'll take a comfortable seat. You'll take a nice big inhale and exhale, big exhale, open your mouth wide and stick out your tongue and say, ah, and again, inhale. And exhale out the mouth and say, ah, ah, <laughs> and I'll even show you. It can be really silly so we can all see me do it. Take a nice big inhale together and exhale out the mouth saying, ah, ah, nice big inhale 
and exhale out the mouth saying ah, ah, and you can even make it more playful with your kids. Inhale, then exhale if you're being a lion, you know, it's lion's breath. You could do roar, different sounds like that to make it a little bit more fun. It also reduces stress, stress and tension in our face, in our mouth. So really, really great to kind of allow ourselves to have that time to be a little bit more relaxed. And then let's go back and see what the other ones we have to go over are. So yeah, we talked about this. So yeah, so we have lion's breath, which was great. And you also have that in your handout. So hopefully you can have some fun with that. And you know, it's also really helpful to make that sound when you exhale. So you really know you're exhaling. It can sound kind of silly, but it's a really great way to make sure you're exhaling and make sure you're really getting the most out of your exhale. And this movement and breath, we did this earlier um, and I wanna make sure we have some time to go over yoga stories. So we won't do another one right now, but we you know, find time to do simple movements that are linked with our breath. And so oftentimes inhales, you can you know, reach towards the sky and inhale can often seem like opening up, extending, reaching out and exhales can thought, be thought of as more grounding down, rooting yourself down. So inhaling, reaching up and exhaling, rooting down. You can do a full body one where you're standing up. Inhale, reach up, come onto your tippy toes, reach up towards the sky and exhale, let your hands fall down towards your feet, towards the ground. So making it a full body thing. One more like that if you're playing along at home. Inhale, reach up, stand on your tippy toes, reach towards the ceiling, can you touch it? And exhale, let your hands fall down towards the ground. Can be really, really great ways to kind of get more movement, get more playfulness with your body, with your breath. So talking a little bit now about relaxation and mindful activities for the whole family, as well as if you're in a work environment or a teacher, social worker, working at a hospital, offering support to adults or children, finding ways to be a little bit more mindful, finding kind of creative ways to be uh, more mindful and find relaxation. So like we said, we can stretch together, whatever that looks like for you and your family. That can mean, you know, doing a formal yoga class. It can be, like we said, asking everyone in the family to, you know, what feels good for you to stretch today. And someone might say that they want to stretch their fingers and we can stretch our fingers. Someone might say that their back is feeling sore. So can we get a little movement in the back? We're gonna talk a little bit later about creating these yoga stories together and how it can be really beneficial to our families as well as our peers at work and everything uh, to share experiences and stories with our families so that we can start to express ourselves, work through different problems and also have a little bit more fun and allows us to be a little bit more relaxed because we're laughing together, because we're enjoying each other's company things like that. That ties into, of course, playing together, finding time to play with one another, play with your children, finding time to ask them to teach you things and you teach them things is really wonderful. You can always help each other with tasks. That's a really great way to be mindful. If you're, you know, folding the laundry or doing the dishes, can you have, you know, one of your kids help you? Or can, if your kids are doing it, can you ask your sibling to help you? really great way to, you know, be mindful and work together. Uh, taking walks, we, we talked about that one is a really great way um, to be mindful because we're noticing, you know, how it feels. Are we walking on a hard surface? Are we walking on dirt or on grass? Are we walking fast? Are we walking slow? And start to notice a little bit more what we're hearing, what we're seeing and what we're feeling you know, how, how the world is around us and what that then maybe makes us feel. So noticing that a little bit more. Relaxation and mindful activities right before bed can be really, really wonderful. Finding time to slow down a little bit to hopefully increase that sleep quality to 
relax and reduce stress right before going to bed so that we can really have the most restful sleep possible is so, so important. And I hope you guys can think of some other activities and I'd love to hear them later. And, you know, there's no wrong answers. Again, we're finding ways that we can be mindful and relax and find stretching and, you know, fun together. So we're really enjoying the whole experience here and it can look really different for each other. And we want to remember to support each other and kind of remain present with each other and, you know, encourage each other to work through different things and have fun with that. So now we're up to yoga stories and we're going to talk a little bit about these and hopefully review one. You should have an example in your handouts here. So just a little bit about yoga stories. So it's a really fun way and creative way for families as well as if you're working in a, you know, a situation where you have kids around you or adults and you kind of want to do a fun activity together to share about your days and reflect together. So oftentimes we're so busy and you know maybe at dinner time we sit down and we ask everyone how their day was, but how can we kind of expand upon that? How can we uh, explore more what it really felt like to go through the day as your child or what it really felt like to you know have a hard day at work and you know, maybe the, the words of I had a hard day at work aren't enough. And how can we be a little bit more creative, have a little bit more fun and playfulness to express ourselves. And they're really a great way to learn from each other as well, because we're learning different movements, different sounds, we're learning about each other's imagination. And you can use kind of, you know, formal yoga postures, but you also don't have to, you know, they can be different things that you know you you make up it doesn't have to be a specific yoga pose of course uh, it's really great to remember that we're kind of always learning from each other so that we want to really be supportive of each other we want to know that we're all in this together kind of we're all working through it together um, and of course as a parent as a caretaker as a social worker as a teacher you know you can set limitations um, for safety reasons you know depending on the environment or the abilities of the people around you, you know, maybe deciding to tell a yoga story um, from everyone's chair. If, you know, you don't have a ton of space for kids to be moving around or things like that. Um, but we don't, we, we want to kind of find the, the sweet spot of not limiting our children's imaginations and our adult imaginations, but also of course, keeping safety in mind. Uh, so you can always use the outline of a yoga story. We'll talk about that next. We want to ask questions. We want to encourage kids and ourselves, of course, to express themselves. We want to ask questions that require more than a yes or no answer, you know, something that allows them to think a little bit more, to have a little bit more fun with it. Play with your kids, you know, become a part of the story if they want you to. Um, allow yourself to move like they do or sound like they sound. Uh, it's really great, I think, for most children to uh, use animals and the way they move and the way they sound to create these different characters. Um, and it's also really great as a, you know, facilitator, parent, caregiver, so on, teacher, that you find a little way to find a little uh, relaxation kind of at the end, something that can calm them down, allows them to process everything they just shared with you, but allows them to, uh, you know, find some release and relaxation at the end of their yoga story. So outline of a yoga story, of course, it can be really, you know, broad and everything, but we want to, in the beginning, maybe brainstorm characters. Are you playing yourself? Is it about yourself? Or are you telling a totally different story? You know, are you taking on a different name? Or are you becoming a different animal? Uh, where's your story taking place? Is it at home? Is it in a city? Is it in a make-believe land? Is it up in space? Is it in a tree? Things like that. And of course, right now, if you're at home with your kiddos and you want to uh, play along, you can have them start to decide this. So ask your kids, you know, or I'm asking your kids, what do you, who do you want to be in your story today? Do you want to tell a story about um, how you were uh, a little puppy dog and you went to get breakfast this morning? And what did that look like? What did you eat? Where did you go? Who was there with you? Who played with you? How did the dog sound? How, you know, how are you moving? Things like that. Let it be playful. 
loosely, you know, that you want the middle to kind of be what happened. And again, of course, this can be, this can be really loose. Like you can just act it out and have fun with your kids or you're welcome to of course you know write this down and actually have them answer each question and have this be a really playful and exciting thing and i'd love to of course hear if anyone does any similar things or storytelling or you know fun things with their kids at home um, or their students at school and kind of sharing that with me i'd love to hear some ideas that you have uh so just that we always want to support our children and ourselves and expressing themselves but it's also like I said it's equally important to find ways to encourage them to find relaxation and release after telling a story that might have brought up maybe intense feelings emotions or just you know got them really amped up and really excited so we want to find ways to find a little bit of calmness a little bit of relaxation at the end so we're going to try one together here and we're just going to go off of the one that you all should have in your handouts. And let me just pull mine up. Where is it? Oh, hold on. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so here it is. So you should have all this example of a yoga story. And so I titled this one, um, Brave Like a Lion. And I was working with a kid when I did this one. Uh, so it's um, his ideas and mine. Um, so Kate says he started, you know, that they woke up today giving a big stretch like a cat. So what does a cat look like when they stretch, you know, are they rounding their back and getting a little arch? Are they meowing as they reach up towards the sky? Things like that. Let it be playful. And when they got out of bed, they were feeling sleepy and big like an elephant. So what would that look like? What would a sleepy big elephant look like? You know, is that their trunk going, Aah! And are they sleepy? Are you moving slowly, heavy? Are your footsteps, you know, strong and heavy as they hit the earth? Kind of letting it be playful. What else? So yeah, like I said here, will you be taking big or small steps? When they were getting ready to go, you felt a big yawn coming on. What would a really big yawn look like if you were a large animal like an elephant? Would it be yawn? No, it'd be really big. So let your whole body move. Let your whole body stretch. What would it feel like to get a big elephant yawn in? Really important to let it be playful. So, oh, and we talked about that it was raining. So how can the rain look like, you know, coming down? Is there thunder? You know, are we, are we, are we a little afraid maybe of the sound outside? And it says that the little boy said that it made him feel very, very scared. So what does it feel like to be scared? Does it often make us feel small? Does it often make our voice quieter? Asking your kids, you know, what does that feel like? And then in this one, the child said that they wish they could be brave like a lion. And we talked a little bit about, you know, how can we practice what a brave lion would sound like? What would their roar sound like? Maybe they would even walk differently. Are they bigger? Are they moving faster? things like that. So they were talking about how maybe we could all do the lion's breath together to feel stronger. We did that earlier, but we can do it all again together here. We take a nice big inhale and exhale out. Let's hear your roar, roar, or a nice big inhale and exhale out. Lion's breath, stick your tongue out. Ah. Does that make you feel stronger? Did that make you feel more powerful as a lion? You know, playful things like that. You can always ask your kids as they're telling the story or if they say they're scared, asking them, well, what would make you feel better? How could we make it better? You know, thinking of different ways to really explore this exploration and this expression with your kiddos here. And then now that he's feeling a little bit stronger and like a lion, Maybe we can go for a walk together because we're not so scared of the rain and kind of finding ways to support our kids' decisions here to not be, you know, to use their imaginations and let it be really playful. So that was just a quick example. Uh, and we were just kind of reading that yoga story example together, which can be a really nice way to 
start maybe with your kids if you wanted to have them you know explore the different ways that they can share how their day was you know it doesn't have to be of course exactly like that it's something that's specific to your kiddos hopefully and how they're feeling and i think that's really really important uh i know that was short but if you have any questions about yoga stories you know again i can't reiterate enough that they're supposed to be playful and we're supposed to have fun exploring, you know, how we're feeling in the moment, how our kids are feeling or reflecting upon how they felt earlier. So we just have a little bit more time. <clears throat> so quickly, briefly here, just talking about how art can support our yoga stories. So it can be really fun to make it even more playful, more theatrical, more imaginative here by using household items like sheets and towels, color, colored clothing or scarves. You have some examples in your handouts about puppets, like simple puppets you can do at home using sock puppets. All these things can be really great to build upon your yoga story. And again, you can approach it in many different ways, like we said earlier. You are more than welcome to write down your yoga story with your kiddos, you know, what happens in the beginning, who are the characters, the middle, and kind of what wraps it up at the end, everything. Or you can just let it be exploratory and kind of ask questions as you go, as you're moving around the living room, as you're reaching for different items, letting it be playful, letting it be fun in the moment. So the same goes with kind of how you incorporate art into your yoga stories. You don't have to, but you, you know, you, art could be just using um, a colorful scarf to show the rain, you know, art, uh, you could wear all gray if you were coming out and you were in a very grumpy mood and maybe you were, you know, being a, being that big elephant that was really sleepy in the morning and maybe you put on a gray hat or gray pants or something like that. So letting it be playful, using maybe the, the couch or the pillows to be different props or be different landscapes can be really wonderful. You can also find ways to think of uh, different, you know, drawings or paintings that you can use to use as a reflection either during or after your yoga story. So, you know, maybe you're drawing a picture of what it was like to be in your yoga story or maybe after you're thinking about it with your kids and kind of asking them how that felt. Uh, so again, trying to make props to help with your yoga stories. We talked about puppets are great or simpler complex puppets are a really great way to, if you don't want to be the character, maybe your hands are the character, or maybe that's something you develop using toys or stuffed animals at home. There's more ideas in your handouts that I hope you guys all take a look at. <clears throat> and before we move on to questions here, I just want to um, try to just remind you all to really take time for these, you know, mindful moments in our lives and really look and find something that works best for you and your family. We want to see that something um, that maybe doesn't work for someone else really works for you and really take the time to explore this self-care, relaxation, mindfulness, these different movements and stretching are all really, really important things as well as I hope you're able to see some of the benefits kind of of doing a yoga story that it allows us to really connect and explore, share our feelings with our family members and have a little fun together. So if anyone has any questions, we can go into some questions. If not, I have some questions that I've been asked in the past that we can go over. So I'll just give a few moments if anyone has any questions about maybe the type of movements that they're doing at home, the type of stretches or breathing exercises that they're doing, you know, any types of, <clears throat> excuse me, modifications that you might be working with for yourself or your kids or, you know, the students that you're working with. Again, we always want to find ways that everyone can be involved. So if it's something that maybe is, is done standing, but some, some people can't stand that are doing it, maybe you can find ways to do it seated you know, so that everyone can be involved. Okay, so if anyone has any questions though, please feel free to reach out and I'm just gonna review a couple 
of the questions that I get asked often kind of when talking about these topics. Uh, so just again, you know, just what are some different ways that we can practice movement with our families and just really important to kind of take small steps. So find simple things that can be a good way to kind of start if you're not doing this already with your family. So maybe again, it's like taking a walk together or, you know, after you fold the laundry, we're reaching up towards the sky and we're doing a little bit of movement. So find really simple kind of small ways to start this process of becoming a little bit more active, becoming a little bit more mindful of ourselves, I think is a really great way. Um, also uh, not, not putting a lot of pressure so it doesn't have to look like something, you know, you can find something that works really good for you and maybe that doesn't work well for someone else and that's okay. We're finding, you know, different things that work best for everyone. Uh, oftentimes I get asked, you know, is it wrong or, or bad to, you know, take this time for myself, you know, concerning the idea of like self-care, uh, especially as caregivers and busy, busy parents. It's a really, really important. And, you know, like I said on the slide, that self-care isn't selfish. We really need to take time for ourselves and by taking time for ourselves, we're able to then give more to our family. We're able to give more to our students, um, to our loved ones. And that's really, really important to kind of find that balance. And you often wanna, you know, try to notice before you're overwhelmed or before you're burnt out and try to ask maybe for some time alone or finding things that, you know, can your kiddos read quietly, um, by themselves while you maybe have a cup of tea and that's your kind of unplug and alone time if you're not able to fully step away but also asking family or if you know friends to to step in and help with that is a really really important thing to find time for self-care um what are some other ones oh our breathe can breathing you know these different breathing techniques can they be dangerous and things like that uh of course, we never want to like really, really hold the breath. We don't want to strain. We want to be aware, uh, and especially working with kids that maybe have a smaller lung capacity, uh, things like that. So we want to start slow. Like I said, simple things like inhaling palms reach up, exhaling your palms come down, inhaling your palms come up, and exhale, they come down. Just a couple like that can be really, really great. And that's a breathing exercise. That's a centering exercise. That's something to create a little bit more relaxation for yourself. Mm, let's see what else. Does anyone have any questions out there? We hope you enjoyed following along these last three webinars. This is the last one I'm doing, but if anyone has any questions, you can always reach out, of course. Uh, what else? So the yoga story is talking a little bit about that. I often will get asked, you know, how long do they have to be and like the structure of it all. And again, we talked about this, but it, it is of course can be said many times that it's, it's meant to be fun for you. It's meant to be enjoyable. So letting it, if possible, be kind of fluid and flexible and creative is really, really great. So you're allowing yourself to explore and your children to explore this time together. So <clears throat> it could be a really great way to uh, reflect upon something that everyone did that day. Like maybe you all took a trip or visited a family member that lives a little further away, or maybe even what's going on right now in the world. Like, you know, we're, we're living through this, this pandemic. This is really intense times. And especially for our kiddos who are not maybe able to express how that feels or not maybe able, depending on where you are, to play outside as much as they used to. So finding kind of ways to support them in that and maybe ask them how it feels. What, what does it look like in, you know, in their imagination? What does the world look like? What's going on? And that could be many different things. And we want to just kind of be there for our kids to hold that space for them, let them express themselves. And, you know, again, asking questions, you know, not yes or no, but just, you know, so not, is that scary? You know, that would, that's a good question, but we want to like 
support them a little bit more in that. So instead of like, like is it scary what's going on? You know, what, what can we do to make ourselves feel a little happier today if they're having a hard day or it's just, you know, it is scary what's going on. So what can we do to make ourselves feel a little happier? And they could say, you know, I really miss, I really miss going outside and getting to play on the playground with my friends, or I miss going outside and getting to see like the trees or something, you know, that's, that's really hard. And, you know, that's a, that's a sad reality for a lot of us right now, but we can try hopefully to find a little, a little joy and a little creativity in that maybe asking them, well, well, what does your favorite tree look like? If you could be your favorite tree, what would it look like? What color are the leaves? Are they green? Are they changing colors? Are there no leaves? Is it just branches and they're swaying? Or are they really still? And, you know, how tall is that tree? Could you be that tall? You know, if, could, they, could they stand on the couch or, you know, if that's okay in your house or things like that and kind of let them, let them explore a little bit how they can express themselves. And again, especially during this, these really, really challenging times, we really want to find ways to allow them to, you know, to support. And if, you're, if your child is not interested in kind of moving or doing that type of expressive um, movement, you're also welcome to have them do some drawing, you know, how does it, what does that tree look like, you know, to go with that theme or something, or, you know, how does that, how would that, uh, that lion look like if he was happy with his friends and can your kid draw, you know, that brave lion that we talked about earlier, you know, with his friends, who are his friends, things like that. Uh, so just, I hope that you're able to kind of hold on to some of these handouts and explore some of these different uh, ideas and themes kind of all together with your family and really asking them what what is a good way to express themselves and you know your kids your kids can tell you you know if they want to do it with movement if they want to do it with music if they want to do it by drawing a picture or writing a story maybe your kids really like to you know write and create that way verbally and things like that and maybe they want to write their own yoga story to express what's going on or how things are feeling for them so really asking our kids, really understanding what they're going through, as well as for yourselves, you know, yoga stories can seem a little bit um, maybe childish for you if you're the parent or something. But, you know, there's lots of things we talked about in this webinar and the others that can be really, really beneficial for um, us as parents and caretakers as well. Finding that time for mindfulness, like we did that centering activity in the beginning, you know, maybe right before you get out of bed, you know, no one has to know you keep your eyes closed and no one will know. They'll think you're still sleeping. You just take a couple breaths. Just get yourself ready for the day. Notice how you're feeling. You know, even doing it before bed is really great. Even grounding activities when you're cooking dinner, things like that. Really feeling your feet on the ground. Noticing how that feels. Allowing yourself to root down and ground down is so, so important. So I hope you realize that you can take a little time for yourself. You know, that it can be um, self-care can be for yourself, but you can also find ways to let it really be uh, for the whole family and let everyone really enjoy the process and experience this kind of excitement of sharing, stretching, yoga, movement, breathing, mindfulness, relaxation all together. So I really hope everyone enjoyed today's webinar. And if anyone has any other questions, or any other thoughts about today, and you're welcome to reach out um, after as well, if that's better for you, uh, if you wanna talk more about kind of what we went over here today. But I hope everyone has a wonderful day and I look forward to hopefully hearing from you and continuing your journey of mindfulness and relaxation and yoga and movement. Have a great day, everyone.